in the beauty of holiness. so long. together to sing praises to our God for the great and marvelous things God has done. Come let us share the love of God with the world as we seek to be the light. Come let us celebrate the power of God as we build the beloved community from generation to generation. Let us praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The hymn of celebration, how to reach the masses, lift him up. How to reach the masses, those of every birth, for an answer Jesus gave the key. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Without further line, and let's sing to the glory of God.
Amen. Now we will have the worship through prayer by our brother George Budd. Good morning. At this time, when I've been trying to be as calm as I can be because I'm nervous, y'all did a song like that. <laughs> now I'm, wi I'm wired up. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, First, we just want to say thank you for letting us see another day. You have brought us from last week until this Sunday, and we thank you. For some of us, the journey for seven days might have been easy, but for others, it was hard. But we thank you, Lord, because you were there always to lift us up, to walk beside us, to guide us. We thank you for that, Lord. <laughs> Heavenly Father, today is a special day. This is our first I Love St. Luke Day. And whatever we may pull together to keep building up your kingdom, Watch out for the second St. Luke Day and watch out for the third because we're going to try to bring the roof down. Heavenly Father, there are some of us that are in nursing homes and in the hospitals, and we ask that you will be with them. They want to be here to worship. And we thank you that we're able to come into your house one more time. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we pray that from the pulpit to the door, you will bless each and every person here. And since we know that your arms can stretch wide, we pray that all of our members on Zoom, Facebook, wherever they are, and of course those who want to be here, from the nursing homes and in the hospitals. Bless them in a special way, Lord. Lift them up and let them know that no matter what they're going through, you will always be there for them. Special prayers, Lord, for the speaker of the hour. Because when he comes to deliver the message that you want him to deliver, we pray, Lord, that we will keep our minds open, keep our hearts open to receive it, and let it be like gas that we put in the car. Let us take us from this Sunday to the next Sunday. Heavenly Father, we will always put you first. And we just want to say thank you for your love, for your guidance, for giving us good health and keeping us in our right and sound mind. Lord, be with us in this service. Lift us up, and we will always continue to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus Christ's most precious name we pray, amen.
will have the worship through scripture by Sister Shatika Green. Good morning, church. The scripture reading today will come from Psalms 4 in its entirety. And it reads, answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your bed, search your hearts and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many, Lord, are asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy when the grains and new wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. This is the word of the Lord. It's already been blessed. And now our wonderful sanctuary choir will worship through music. Y'all look good. <laughs>
Come on, that ought to be somebody's testimony this morning. He's a mighty good God. Come on and bless the name of our Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of our God. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God this morning. Amen. It feels like I love St. Luke Day in here. Amen. We praise the name of our God. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ this morning. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Anybody just glad to be here? Just glad. I mean, just glad to be here. Amen. It feels good to be in God's presence. We greet you in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Those of you who are worshiping with us for the first time here at St. Luke, will you just wave your hand at me? Let me see our first time guest. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Welcome. Bonjour. We welcome you this morning. Bonjour. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so grateful that you have journeyed with us to be here and worship. I see you as well in the back. God bless you. Okay, then. Amen. Uh, we just thank God. It's not by accident or, or happenstance, but it is truly by God's divine providence that we're all in here together and worshiping online. Let's greet our global community worshiping with us on Zoom, on Facebook, on YouTube. Good morning. Come on, y'all could do better than that. They're part of our family. Amen. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so grateful. We're so grateful for all that God has blessed us. We're something special we want to let you know here at St. Luke, that the Jesus in us truly loves the Jesus in you. And the Jesus in you has got to love the Jesus in me because it's easy to love. St. Luke, why don't you grab somebody's hand, hug them to the left or to the right, and tell them it's easy to love. somebody the Jesus in me yes he loves us the Jesus in you it is so yeah it's easy like Sunday morning I'm so glad that you're here with us Come on, hug somebody and tell them that the Jesus, he loves us, the Jesus in you, it is so, yes, I love you with the love of Jesus, I'm so glad to see you here today. Hey. Come on, find somebody else and tell them that the He loves her. The Jesus in you loves her. It is so easy. Yes, I love you today. We're so glad to see you today. Direct your attention to the screens for our morning announcements. Amen. Greetings, family and friends. Welcome to the loop. God has blessed us to experience a new year the year to be. Here are your announcements. Bible study is every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Join us in person or on Zoom. 
Join us every Thursday at 6 p.m. for Estudio Biblico. The Married Couples Ministry will have Bible study April the 17th at 7.30 p.m. Get ready for our Brain Health Series. There will be a Parkinson's Disease Awareness event this Thursday, April 18th, starting at 12 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. There will be a men's breakfast this Saturday, April the 20th, starting at 10 a.m. There will be a joint usher board meeting Saturday, April the 20th at 1.30 p.m. The scholarship ministry presents Soaring Through Greater Heights in Education. The banquet will take place Saturday, June 8th at 6.30 p.m. The location is Eastwood Manor, located in the Bronx. The scholarship ministry is accepting donations of $110. Here's what's happening this week at the Luke. Lastly, we want to wish all April birthdays a happy birthday. These are your announcements. Praise the Lord. I, I know that the April birthdays stood up last week, but I heard that Sister Barbara Green is going to have a birthday this Wednesday. Happy birthday, Sister Barbara Ann Green. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. And Skylar just turned eight. Happy, birth, happy belated birthday, Skylar. God bless you. Amen. We praise God. I want to thank all the missionaries who and uh, members of the congregation who journeyed with us on yesterday to St. Stephen uh, Community AME Church for our magnificent, inclusive, wonderful, marvelous Manhattan district. Amen. As we celebrated our presiding elder, presiding elder Kim Anderson. Amen. Let's give God praise for our missionaries on yesterday. Um, we have a busy week coming up this Thursday, as you know, will be our brain health awareness uh, activity. Uh, and so that will take place. The flyer is in your bulletin. We ask that you will govern yourself accordingly. And then next Sunday, we will host our spiritual tea party, which will take place at 1 o'clock p.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. See any member of the Emma S. Freeman Missionary Society for that afternoon uh, experience. Amen. We're going to have our own tea party. Amen. And it's not just open to the sisters of the church. It's open to everybody. Amen. So you all come out and enjoy it. On this past uh, last Tuesday, we had a wonderful Bible study series as we talked about uh, this series that we're in, Be the Change. Amen. So we invite you to join us this Tuesday night for Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m. online. We're going to be uh, just continuing to journey through what it means to be the change. And then on last Wednesday night, our young adults had an incredible Bible study experience. And we thank God for our young adult ministry. And this week will be our married couples ministry. Amen. That will have a Bible study at 7 p.m. or 7.30 p.m., I believe, on this Wednesday coming up. Amen. And so we are headed to the New York Annual Conference. Amen. Starting next week. Next week, we will head to the New York Annual Conference beginning on Tuesday with the women in ministry and the evangelism. And then on Wednesday at 12 o'clock noon, your pastor will be preaching the WMS annual day. Amen. Let's praise God for that. I pray that you've been praying for me. Amen. We're going to celebrate eight wonderful years of our conference president, Sister Mary S. Davis. Amen. Let's praise God for her. Amen. She has done a Herculean job. It's not easy to be over 100 in some of our churches of, uh, in the New York Conference area, but she has done an incredible job as our conference president, and so we want to celebrate her. So if you need a ride to Brooklyn, amen, if your accessor ride won't take you, we got an accessible ride that will take you, amen. Uh, so you just sign up and ride the bus with us so that we can uh, take uh, a journey together, amen. On this Saturday upcoming at 10 a.m., the men's ministry will hold our second monthly 
Bible study and breakfast on Saturday at 10 a.m. Amen. The way God blessed us last month, I can only imagine how incredible it will be this Saturday. So I invite you to come out Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Invite a brother, invite a friend uh, to be with us on Saturday at 10. Immediately, or not immediately, but after service today at 3 o'clock p.m., we will journey to Mount uh, Allen, Ch Allen Church AME in uh, Allen AME Church, rather, in White Plains for their Women's Day. Amen. Our very own Reverend Ella Brandon will be preaching the word this afternoon. Amen. Let's give God praise for her. Amen. It took everything in me to not call her this morning and tell her, preach what you're preaching this afternoon, this morning. But I didn't want her to give me no looks, so I decided... I was going to come up. Amen. I uh, want you to uh, pray for our first lady who is home watching online this morning. She's not feeling the best. But if you send us some love this morning, I pray that she'll feel better. Amen. Praise God. I pray that God will strengthen her body and God will give her all that she needs. Amen. Uh, and so I want you to come with us this afternoon. They've got food. We're going to have a wonderful time. We always go out to White Plains. It's one of our, our, our second homes. Amen. So I ask that you would come let us support Reverend Eugene Allen Minton III and the entire St. Uh, Allen Church family in White Plains. Now, next Sunday is the last Sunday of this annual conference year. And so before the Spirits of Tea Party, on the way out, we're going to have something special for you just to let you know how much we're grateful uh, for the opportunity to serve as your leaders for this conference year. Amen. And then on the 28th, we're going to go to the annual conference together at Greater Allen Cathedral to make sure the bishop sends your pastor back. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't hear enough amens there. I don't know. Uh, praise the amen. All right. Praise God. We praise the Lord. Amen. We hope that we will return back. But we want to conclude our annual conference year uh, with a, a high note because God has truly been good to us. Amen. And I right, Brother Caden. God has been truly good to us. We praise God for our poet Lorette of the state of New York who is with us this morning as well. But on this I Love St. Luke Day, this is a day that helps us as a congregation to meet all of our obligations and to be uh, an investment, to make an investment in the future of the African Methodist Episcopal Church to support colleges like Wilberforce University and Morris Brown, to support our global missions outreach. And so what we do today helps us to be a part of this global spiritual movement called the African Methodist Episcopal Church. And so I know each year it's a difficult thing. It's always, you got to prioritize and got to specialize. It comes up three times a year, but we know it is a blessing to the kingdom of God. So I invite you today as we prepare for this moment of generosity, prepare for our tithes and our offerings, to know that there are multiple ways to give here at St. Luke. You can give online at our church website, thelukenyc.org backslash give. You can text to give. You can download our church app. You can give on Tithely or push pay or mail your gifts to St. Luke AME Church, 1854 Amsterdam Avenue, New York, New York, 10031. Uh, so we ask that you would uh, uh, use uh, this moment to prepare your sacrificial gift of $250 as well as your tithe and your offering so that we can be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Amen. We're not asking you to do anything that we are not going to do. So we're going to do it right now as well electronically because the first lady is not feeling well. I mean, I'm going to have to take care of hers today. So I hope she's watching this so she can Apple pay me hers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen. But we're going to do it together. Amen. So I'm going to give for her on her behalf. Amen. Lord, y'all didn't tell me that's what marriage was going to be like. You know, nobody told me that was, she chose the right day. To, uh, <laughs> but Lord, we praise God. Amen. So I want, to, I want to give mine as well right now as well so that we can give it together to the glory of God. So if you would lift up whatever you have, your phone, your, your wallet, your purse, your pocketbook. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these gifts. We ask that these gifts will be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. We know you're going to meet every need of this house. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, St. Luke, won't you stand all over the house, follow the directions of the ushers. Let's give it to God with a cheerful spirit, amen.
grace of Almighty God. I want to mention a couple uh, more things for our announcements. Our advancement day will take place on the second Sunday in June. I believe that is June the 10th or June the 9th. Uh, June the 9th, second Sunday in June, June the 9th. All of our young people who are going to be matriculating to the next grade, we need to get your information. Amen. So parents, see Sister Joyce Williams immediately after service. She has the advancement forms. We want to honor and recognize all of our young people who are going from kindergarten to first grade, uh, first to second along the way. We have three graduating seniors. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise for that. We got three graduating seniors, and on June the 8th, we're going to celebrate our seniors with our uh, annual scholarship banquet. Amen? So I need your support. I need your support. So since we got three of them, we want to make sure that we send them off right. Amen? So we need everyone to buy a ticket, and we need everybody to get a ticket. Amen? Our tickets are $110. Amen? And you can see Sister Joyce Williams for a ticket or any member of the scholarship ministry. Uh, we want to make sure that we, and you can put some on it today, I'm assuming. You can put a little down payment on it, amen, uh, to get your ticket to meet us at Eastwood Manor to celebrate our three wonderful young people who are graduating. It's been a blessing to see them matriculate over these years and to see them now reach uh, this peak of their academic career and believe that God is going to do something exciting for them on their next level. We want to celebrate them as a church family. Amen. So we invite you to do that. Last week, you, you had your form for the Legacy Tree. Uh, and so we are still collecting and receiving donations for the Legacy Tree Project. So if you want to invest in the future of our church and uh, own, have your name or memory of your family, or if you want to celebrate your 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 um, what is to come in your family, you don't have to put an end date. You can just have a beginning date, and then whenever that time comes, we'll add a date on the other side. Amen. So it's not just a memorial tree; it's a legacy tree. Amen. Because we're all a part of the legacy of St. Luke. So we invite you to be a part of the Legacy Project uh, on that day, uh, by May the 28th, which I believe is Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we want to dedicate that tree on that weekend. Amen. And also on Memorial Day weekend, and our pastor's aid ministry will tell us more about this, but we're going to have a celebration. Amen. On Saturday, May 25th. So y'all save the date. Save the date. We're going to have a good time in the Lord. That's a special day. Amen. That's a holiday. Amen. Amen. We're going to celebrate that day. That's a green day. Praise the Lord. Amen. I praise God that I, I'll still be your, hopefully I'll still be your pastor but after this annual conference. But your new pastor at the annual conference will have a birthday on May the 25th. Amen. And so I pray that you would support us. Amen. Support the um, pastor's aid ministry. They'll have tickets and all of that will come out. But we want to just have a good time. We're going to be cruising on the water just having a good time. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to have a boat party. Amen. So uh, you, you can just get ready. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say something, but I'll save it for another day. Amen. You don't need to wear no nothing, no bikinis. We're just going to get on the boat. Amen. And eat together. Amen. So we're going to have a good time in the Lord. But we just want to fellowship. Uh, and so I want to spend my birthday with my church family. Amen. So we invite you to come and be a part of that. Sister Monet and uh, the ministers, uh, pastor's aid ministry. Oh, yes. Well, okay. We got a whole weekend. Amen. Of activities. Amen. Praise the Lord. The young adults are going to hang out with us too. Amen. So Friday night, we're going to have a bowling party. Amen. We're going to bowl. We're going to, that's one of my favorite pastimes. So we're going to bowl and we're going to have a boat. I like that. Bowling and a boat. We're going to have a whole weekend. Amen bowling and a boat. So we invite you to come out Friday night for our bowling alley. The tickets are going to be available. Uh, I'm looking at you. So how are the tickets going to be available? Come to any member of the Young Adult Ministry and get your tickets for bowling and come to any member of the minister's uh, pastor's aid ministry. So Sister B will come for you can I'm, see, I'm trying to read through the mask, but I see what she said. Uh, but yes, so y'all will hear more about that, but we want you to save that weekend, Friday and Saturday. We're going to have a, a green party. Amen. The Sanctuary Choir will come now to lead us in music, uh, and then we will hear what thus saith the Lord on this day. Amen. So I want to also thank the family of Sister Mildred Howard, Sister Glenda, How Glenda Hayward, sorry, sorry, Glenda Hayward, uh, for their her donation of uh, Sister Mildred Hayward's daughter, Sister Glenda, for her donation to be included on this I Love St. Luke Day. Amen. Even though she may not be with us physically, Sister Hayward is still with us spiritually. Amen. We praise God for that as well.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. So we, we got to, you all got to hear my mother sing last week. And my sister is here with me today. And so you'll get to hear her sing this week. Everybody, <laughs> praise God from Oregon. As she ministers to us.
on, every grateful heart ought to be lifted this morning. Come on, every grateful heart. Come on and give it the name of my Lord praise. Anybody grateful for what he did for you? Anybody grateful that he woke you up this morning? Anybody grateful that he started you on your way? I, I mean, I could have been dead sleeping in my grave, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful for what he's done for me. I'm grateful that he dried the tears from my eyes. I'm grateful that weeping may endure for the night. But joy cometh in the morning. I'm grateful that by his stripes I'm healed. I'm grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart is gratefulness. We thank you, Jesus. We glorify your name in this place, Jesus. Oh, you would have had 10,000 tongues. We wouldn't have enough to give your name praise. But God, with the one that we have, we honor you, Jesus. Oh, it's gratefulness. Thank you, God. We honor you, Jesus. It is gratefulness. It is gratefulness. I'm grateful, Jesus. You didn't have to be this way. You didn't have to let me let, you didn't have to let me live, but God, I thank you. Yeah. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Anybody just got a thank you kind of praise in here this morning? I mean, really just got a thank you in your spirit. Oh, God, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for your goodness. Oh, when I think of his goodness, and I think of what he's done for me, my soul shouts glory. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you in this place. We honor your name. We magnify you, God, because you are great and greatly to be praised. Oh, God, this is a place full of grateful people. We've come to give our great God great praise. God, we ask even now that you would anoint these lips of clay. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, let it be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, my rock and my redeemer, the people of God together said, amen. Thank you, Sister Morgan. Amen. Praise God. Grateful. grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Every time I'm able to stand behind this sacred desk, I'm reminded that this pulpit just represents that God pulled me out of a pit to be able to stand before God's people and to proclaim what thus saith the word of God. Each time we stand, we come with trembling and fear. I'm reminded of how Moses heard the voice of God from the burning bush. And God said, don't come any further. Take off your shoes. For where you stand is holy ground. And I'm grateful because... God gives me a chance to stand in the place of the holies of holies. Yeah. God loves you so much that God gave his only begotten son. Yeah. Just for you. Just, just for me. Yeah, I mean, no one else laid their life down for you. The price for your life was so high that only blood could pay it. Yeah. 
not a lamb's blood, not a goat's blood, but the lamb of God that was slain for the sins of the whole wide world. So it, it is natural to be grateful. Yeah, it, it, it would be unnatural if you were in here and you didn't have anything to be grateful for. Some of us ought to be grateful that we just made it here today. Yeah. The kind of week we had, I mean, we could have been sitting under our covers trying to just eat ice cream to make it through. But God has brought us here today. So I'm just grateful to be in the house this morning. I was glad when they said unto me. Yeah. yeah. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Yeah. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. That last night was not my last night. Yeah. But somewhere in the middle of the night, he touched me with his finger of love. I'm going to preach because y'all going to mess me up. Yeah. But I'm, I'm grateful. Yeah. Some of us last year were in the hospitals, but this year God has blessed us to be in the house. Some of us had to say goodbye to somebody that we loved and we didn't think we were going to be able to make it, but we're here in the house today. And so and so we are we are grateful. If you will grab your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible. Chapter number 32. Chap yes, chapter number 32, verse 22. And it reads thusly from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. The same night, he got up and took his two wives and his two maids and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket. And Jacob's hip was put out of joints as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel saying, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the thigh muscle that is on the hip socket, because he struck Jacob on the hip socket at the thigh muscle. 
The word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Friends, for these few moments that are yours and mine, I want to speak to you from this sermonic thought. A change is going to come. A change is going to come. I was born by the river in a little tent. Oh, and just like the river, I've been running ever since. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know a change going to come. These words written by Sam Cooke, who was the son of a Baptist preacher, who grew up in Clarksdale, Tennessee, born in Clarksdale, Tennessee, but graduated from high school in Chicago, Illinois began singing in the gospel group as a young child, sang with the likes of Lou Rawls in the gospel quartet. And, and even at a young age, uh, Sam Cooke had the voice uh, of a soldier, someone who he has known as the Prince of Soul. He, he helped to create soul music. Music that, that spoke to love but from was grounded in a real place. It, it was grounded in a place of his own experience. Sam Cooke, uh, in 1964, wrote these words after uh, watching four little girls being bombed in the 16th Street Baptist Church. September of 1963, young girls were in Sunday school. Sunday school and they heard the blast come through the glass in the middle of their Sunday school and, and a dynamite exploded the church. 16th Street Baptist Church, Birmingham, Alabama. Sam Cooke wrote these words after, after Martin King was arrested for trying to lead a march in 1964. Trying to fight for the Civil Rights Act. Arrested on, on, on Easter weekend and wrote a letter in 1963, a letter from a Birmingham jail. Sam Cooke wrote these words in a period of transition, in a period of transformation. He talks about what it was like to have to go to the movie theater and sit in the balcony. What, what it was like to have to drink from a segregated water fountain. But yet... Deep in his soul, he realized that a change was going to come. That things could not always stay the way they are. But a change is going to come. Actually, so much so that, 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 that tragically, uh, Sam Cooke lost his life at the age of 33. Murdered in Los Angeles, California. A and the song is not released until after his death, posthumously. How is it so that one can, can, can hold on to what is possible even if they're not with us? He, he, he yet maintained the capacity to dream despite the devastation that he saw. He, he was able to hope despite the realities of, of, of the frailties of trying to deal with the double consciousness of being black and being an American. He gifted to the world this song. It became an anthem of a movement. And it is a song that 60 years later still resonates with us because some of us have been born by that river. Yeah, in a little tent. And just like that river, river we've been running ever since. It's really been a long time coming for some of us. Some of us, we, we didn't get it early. We didn't get it when we wanted to. We didn't get it like everybody else. We didn't go through the ranks like everybody went through the ranks. We didn't. Some of us took us five years to get through college. Some of us didn't graduate magna cum laude. Some of us graduated thank you, Lord. I came to preach to some of us this morning who, 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 who have had to wait a little while. Yeah, you. You, 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 didn't, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't get it like everybody else got it. Yeah, you didn't, took you a few rounds at the rodeo to figure it out. But, but, but you know what it feels like to, to wait and to desire for something. 
and to not lose hope on what is to come. And I must be very frank with you, must be very honest, is that this, this song is, is the only thing giving me hope in a moment like today. Yeah, it, 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 it is the only thing that gives me hope when I wonder whether or not last night with these attacks from Iran and Israel and wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and pandemics and famines all around. God, God what are you trying to tell your people today? What is God trying to, 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 to translate to us in, in this particular moment that God has called us to exist? God has called us to live. God didn't call you for any other era but today. Yeah. yeah. If your prime was gone, then God would have taken you in your prime. But God says, wow, there is still breath in your body. I still have work for you to do. And, and, and it, it is it is encumbersome upon us to as we think about what it means to be the change that we cannot allow ourselves to allow what it looks like now to dictate what is the possibility that can be. Too many of us, we give up in this word called nihilism. We lean into nihilism, this nihilistic attitude that the way things are are the way things have to be. We get so frustrated and we get so angry with where they are and we don't want to do anything about it. We have grown to accept second class citizenship. We have grown to accept frustration and anguish and we have grown to settle in in mediocrity but I have come to encourage you today to let you know that a change is going to come. You don't have to stay upset. You don't have to stay disappointed. You don't have to stay living melancholy that God has the plans that God for the Bible says well I know the plans that I have for you say of the Lord and there are never plans for you to settle. There are never plans for you to suffer. There are never plans for you to allow it to just be the way it's going to be. But there are plans for you to prosper. Plans for you to flourish. Plans for you to thrive. And I want to remind someone who's watching online today that God has not forgotten about you. Yeah, yeah God has not given up on you. Yeah, a change is going to come. For some of us, we, we need to hear that today because if, if we were to be honest today, Pastor, uh, uh, April has felt like the longest month ever. Yeah, it, it's only the, the, the 14th, but it feels like we've had 40 days already this month. For some of us, it's, it's been the longest season that we have been dysfunctional. It's been the longest period of time that we have not found ourselves and have not tapped in to what we know to be true about ourselves. For some of us, we were going to give up if we had not walked into this sanctuary today and heard the words of being grateful to remind us that even though it looks bad, that we have something to be grateful for. And I just came to encourage you today. I don't know where you're sitting. Just look straight ahead. You ain't got to blink an eye. All I want to encourage you today is because you made it in God's house today, because you tuned in on Zoom, because you flipped on the YouTube channel or the Facebook page, I have come to remind you that the devil has should have shot his best shot before Sunday morning at 10 a.m. But I have come to serve notice on the enemy that you can touch not God's anointed. You, you, can't, you can't get with your hands on God's children but because we're in the house of God today I know I'm going to get what I need from God anybody came today to get what they need from him don't, don't fool me tonight but this morning but I really didn't come to look at you and I know you didn't come to look at me but I came to bless the name of our God I came because I know that if I didn't find a place to give God praise I would have lost my mind when I go back to work on tomorrow, I would have been ready to cuss somebody out and give them a four letter word that's not Mark, Luke, or John. But I'm so glad this morning I'm in the house. I'm here today because I believe a change is going to come. 
Yeah, look at somebody and say, a change going to come. A change. Here in our text today, we meet Jacob. And Jacob is looking for a change. No, no, no. I'm looking for the microphone. Sorry. <laughs> Jacob is experiencing a change in his own life. For the, his entire life, he has had someone with him. Whether it be his brother Esau, his twin brother Esau in his mother's womb. Whether it was his mother's hand guiding him as he stole his brother's birthright and his blessing. Or even the assistance from his uncle Laban to find his two wives. Jo Jacob has always had his hand held. Jacob has benefited from the privileges afforded to other people. But this time we meet Jacob, he's left alone. It, 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 he, it is important for us to know that isolation breeds elevation. It is in our seclusion that we find serenity. It is in our coveted sacred space that we are able to discern God's will for our life. And perhaps the reason why some of us are frustrated because we have not uh, activated the gifts that God has for us is because we are afraid of being alone. Yeah, we always around people. We always got to have noise around us. Yeah, you can't go to sleep without the television on. <laughs> Got to have somebody on the phone, falling asleep on the phone with them because you're afraid of being alone. Yeah. And here Jacob is looking for a change in his life because, because he's tired of living around other people. He's tired of living uh, under, uh, on Laban's land. He's tired of, uh, of, of living as a beneficiary of everyone else's goodness. And, and for once in his life, he's alone. And, and I hear God telling us today that if we're going to allow changes to come in our life, we got to recognize that it's going to be personal. Yeah. This season of our life has to be personal. You're going to have to decide to do it for yourself. You can't rely on other people to make you happy. You can't, you're going to have to be happy for yourself. You can't, if you're used to hearing the applause of other people to motivate you, you are going to have to get used to celebrating yourself. This is your personal era. Yeah. If change is going to come, it's going to come through you. Because God has called you. And, 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 and the reason why other people can't understand or they're confused about what God is doing in your life is because sometimes we may be talking too much. And, and because we talk so much, we allow other people to talk us out of what God has called us to do. Yeah, Jacob says this is, this is personal. He's, he's got to deal with this alone. There is no Esau. There is no Rachel and Leah. There is no mother. There is no Abraham. There is no Isaac. He's left alone. And the Bible says at midnight, around daybreak, uh, until daybreak, he has to wrestle with a man. He's got to wrestle with, with a man. He's confronted in the middle of the night with, with a man that requires him to wrestle and I, I want to encourage you and let you know that this season will test you. Yeah, it will try you. It will, it will not be easy but you are going to have to learn how to fight for your future. Watch this. Jacob is wrestling at, at midnight until daybreak and the Bible says in verse 25 when the man saw that he did not prevail he struck him on the hip socket and, and, and moved Jacob's hip out of joint as he wrestled with him. Watch this. The, the enemy don't always play fair. Yeah. He, he doesn't always play fair. He, he actually never plays fair. And, 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 and the enemy will, will get you to think that, that because he's wrestling you and because that, that, that there's something that has pulled something out of you, that that is what is supposed to cause you to quit. 
But there are about 35 of us who know that no matter what we got to face, we never going to give up. There, there are about 35 of us in here who know that we've had to fight through some things this year. But, but only by the grace of God, you may have tried to take me out of this. You may have tried to pull everything you could, every stop you could to place in front of me. But I will not stop fighting for what God has for me. Jacob says, the Bible says, he wrestles all night. No matter how much he got to toss and turn, no matter how long the night is, no matter how many people stab him in the back, he keeps on wrestling. And I want to encourage someone in here today who may have found themselves wrestling with your destiny, wrestling with your family, wrestling with your health. You have come too far to give up now. I know they don't play fair. I know know that they ain't got the same rules. I know the same things don't always apply to you, but you got to learn that there is purpose in your pain. Every time they try to pull something out of me, I'm going to fight even harder. I'm going to grind even longer. I know every time they tell me I don't get accepted, I'm going to apply to more places. I, I'm going to get more applications in. I'm not going to allow what they try to do to pull my joints out to stop me from wrestling for what God has for me. And I don't know who's in this place today who has found themselves in the fight of your life. But God says because you're here under the sound of my voice, as long as you don't stop wrestling, I won't stop watching. As long as you don't stop wrestling, I'll never give up on you. As long as you never stop praying. As long as you never stop believing. As long as you never stop fighting. I'll be with you even unto the end. It may be painful, but it's purposeful. I, you can't give up now. God says, will you learn how to turn your pain into your power? Look at what Jacob says. I won't let you go until you bless me. You, you can fight me all along. You can write me down in history with all your bitter, twisted lies. But still, like dust, I'll rise. If I'm going to fight for it, I'm going to get something out of it. I'm not going to let go until you bless me. If I I gotta be depressed. I ain't gonna be depressed long. This is gonna be a testimony of what God will do in my life. Is there anybody in here that knows uh, God will turn your pain uh, into power? God, God will turn your upset moments uh, into a moment of deliverance. Uh, God will turn your tests uh, into a testimony. Look at your neighbor and say, I ain't giving up now. I, I come too far to give up now. I may have to rest so all night long. Uh, but Satan, you should have shot your best shot because I want you to know I ain't giving up. Uh, I ain't never scared. Uh, you can come in my family, uh, but I want you to know as for me and my house, uh, we will serve the Lord. You can try to attack my body, but I know by his stripes, uh, I'm already healed. Uh, is there anybody in here that can give God glory in the fight of your life? Yeah, he said, I won't let you go until you bless me. Yeah, I, there is uh, deliverance from your devastation. Yeah, God will transform your pain into your power. Yeah, there is a purpose for every assignment. Yeah, and the reason why uh, Satan is trying so hard is to wrestle with you and to to, to stop you from getting to where God is trying to go is because of the enemy knows it's providential. It's personal, it's purposeful, but it's also providential because uh, the entire uh, scenario, the entire narrative is set up for one purpose. What is your name? The only reason that God is bringing you through this is because he wants you to remind yourself of who you are. Oh, hallelujah. The reason why it seems like everything is crashing, why it seems like you can't figure it out on your own is because God said, I, I need 
I needed you to get into a place where you would know your own strength. Uh, you don't need Rachel. You don't need Leah. You don't need Laban. You don't need to pull your brother Esau down. All you need, Jacob, is yourself. And I don't know who's in this place today. Who needs to be reminded, be reminded to thine own self, be true. In this season, you can't be nobody but yourself. You, If they don't like you, then so be it and deal with it. I got to be myself. I love myself. It's just going to be me, myself, and I, and that's all right. <laughs> what is your name? What is, what is your name? Who, who are you? And he says, I, I, I'm Jacob. I'm, I'm, I'm the heel catcher. I'm Jacob. I'm, I'm the one when my brother was to come out first, I, I pulled him back in so that I could go ahead of him. I'm, I'm Jacob. I'm the one who put... Uh, wool on my head so that my dad could anoint me and I steal my brother's birthright. I'm, I'm Jacob. I stole my brother's blessing as the firstborn child. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm Jacob. But watch the providence of God. God's providence is so that God will not leave you where you were. Because God sees another side of your story. You may see yourself as Jacob, but God says from now on, you're going to be known as Israel. Uh, yeah, I, I got to change how you look at yourself. Uh, because I want you to know you are not known by your past, uh, but you are going to be known by your future. And everybody who comes after you uh, will not be known as Jacobites. Uh, they're going to be known as Israel. Israelites. Uh, and every now and then you got to be able to tell folks, you may know me in my past tense, uh, but you don't know what God uh, is getting ready to do in my future. Uh, you may know me as Jacob. Uh, you know me for what I used to do, uh, for where I used to go, uh, for who I used to hang out with. Uh, but little do you know uh, that what God has for me uh, is getting ready to blow everybody's mind. Uh, it's getting ready to be so heavy that eyes uh, have not, I wish somebody in here would be able to receive what God has for you. What I'm getting ready to do in your next season eyes have not seen. Uh, ears have not heard. Uh, nor has it entered into the hearts uh, of humankind yet uh, what you shall be. Uh, the name Israel means uh, that I wrestled with God uh, and that I I prevailed. Uh, what it means is that I got the victory uh, and I don't know about you uh, but I'm ready to shed uh, every Jacob experience uh, and I'm ready to move in uh, to my Israel days uh, because a change uh, it's gonna come. Uh, I hear the voice of God saying uh, that I want you to be reminded uh, that God needs to change your perspective. Uh, Jacob was the he but because you had your hip, I've elevated you to a place of your creativity. The hip is the area in which you are able to reproduce, in which you are able to create. And God is saying, I don't want you to be defined by what you've been trying to pull down. But I want everybody to know you for what you are about to do. You are about to create something that nobody has ever dreamed of. You're about to invest in something that's going to change your entire family trajectory. You're about to innovate something that's going to shift all of humanity. Who am I preaching into today? God is saying, it is in your hip that I'm able to create all things new. It's in your hip ha, that I'm able to help you move ha, and help you dance ha, to your destiny. Ha. And I don't know.
about you. But the Bible says that Jacob has to limp a little bit longer. He has to live his days limping because of what he had just gone through. And I don't know about you, but when you look at me, you might wonder why I'm limping. But I came to tell you it's because I prevailed. Every limp is not because I lost. Every limp is not because I was defeated. But some of my scars are because I got the victory. Some of my wounds are because I got power. You may see my scars, but you don't know. You don't know my story. You weren't there. You don't know how. So look at me and judge me if you please. But the reason why I praise my God like this is because even with my limp, grace and mercy is on my side. Even with my limp, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want anybody here. Don't mind giving God praise with your limp. I got a limp, but I got a praise. I got a limp, but I got a shout. I got a limp, but I got a dance. Anybody here ready to give God some glory? Let everything, let everything that have breath praise, praise ye the Lord. Ain't it worthy from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same? He's worthy. Open your mouth. Give God some praise. Open your mouth. A change is going to come. A change is on this way. Anybody believe that by the time you get home, your house will be changed. By the time you go to the doctor, your diagnosis will be changed. Anybody here believe God? He's going to change my bank account. He's going to change my address. He's going to change my mind. Open your mouth. If you believe it, praise him. Praise him. Glory. Glory. It's providential. Elbow your neighbor and say a change is going to come. A change is going to come. Don't stop wrestling. Don't stop fighting. Don't stop believing. A change is going to come. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that one Friday they thought it was over. They put my Jesus on an old rugged cross. They thought it was over. Satan had a party all night Friday. He had a party all day Saturday. But early on Sunday morning, there was a change in the atmosphere. I just sense uh, there is a change uh, in this house. Uh, anybody ready uh, for a change? Uh, I'm ready uh, for a personal change. Uh, I'm ready uh, for a spiritual change. Uh, I want the Lord uh, to speak to me. Uh, I want the Holy Ghost uh, to fill me up. Uh, I want a change. Uh, I'm tired uh, of living like this. Uh, I refuse uh, to be depressed. Uh, I refuse uh, to be down. Uh, but I'm changed. Uh, I'm changed. Uh, I look at my hands uh, and my hands look new. Uh, 
I look at my feet and they do too. He changed. Everybody stand. All over this house. Hallelujah. A change is going to come. Yeah. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. You've been wrestling all night long. But don't give up right now until it blesses you. Yeah. Musicians, just follow me. I need the oh, I need the oh God. every eye closed. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Nobody moving. I have a warrant for the arrest of your attention. Huh. I came to preach to some folk today who are wrestling. Hallelujah. I mean, you wrestling. You ain't. This ain't no regular fight. This is a real fight. You wrestling for your future. And God told me to tell you, don't let go until you get your blessing. Don't let go because what is about to take place in your life? Who God, in the name of Jesus. Generations are about to remember what you did. Yeah. The only other person so far whose name has changed in the Bible was Abraham, whose name was once Abram. Isaac, his name ain't changed. It skipped a generation. Because God said, Jacob, I want you to know that no matter what you have done, I'm going to clean your slate. Yeah. I'm getting ready to erase everything that was in your a clause and let you start anew. So if you're in here today and you've been wrestling by yourself, I want you to know that all night and all day there are angels watching over you. And God says, you've been wrestling so long by yourself, I want you to know you don't got to wrestle by yourself. Jesus is here to fight your battles. You ain't got to do this by yourself. You have a personal Savior who has conquered the world so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I want you to choose Jesus today. Secondly, if you're not a member of a church home, I mean a home where you are growing. I mean a place where you know the gospel is being preached, where souls are being saved, and where lives are being changed. I would love to be your pastor. This church family would really love to be your church family. I want you to be a part of this household of faith. And thirdly, beloved, if you have been wrestling 
I want to pray over your life today that God will give you the strength. I ain't never, I ain't tell you it's going to be easy. I am not here to promise you that it will not require work. I just want to remind you that you have the strength to be able to do it. Come on, every head raised, every eye open. If you want to respond to any one of these three calls, won't you come down any one of these aisles? Come on, come on. I need the I need the Come on, come on, come on. because we need you. Oh God, we can't do this by ourselves. We're trying to bring a change and God, we are facing people who are trying to stand in our way. Yeah, trying to block our progress. Trying to block our elevation that you called us to. But by the power of God that is within me, God, I cancel every attack of the enemy. We send them to the pit of hell. God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I pray for strength as we wrestle. Nobody told me the road was going to be easy. But we've come too far to give up now. So God, in the name of Jesus, I pray even in this place, all over this house, all over line, all over the internet, God, in the name of Jesus, everyone under the sound of my voice, I pray, God, that you would give us strength. That in the middle of the night, when we feel like we're about to give up, remind us that we will not let go until you bless us. Something good is about to come out of this. 
something good is about to happen to you. Something good is about to come your way. Something good is going to come out of this. God says, I'm getting ready to change your name. You've seen me in my BC days. Wait till you get to my AD days. Wait until I come out of my cocoon. Wait until I'm free to be myself. Wait until I fully embrace the divine will that God has for my life. So today, if there's someone who's at this altar who is coming to know Jesus for the first time, will you just lift your hand? It's your first time you want to make a confession to join Jesus. Secondly, if you're here and you want to be a member of this church family, just raise your hand. You want to be a member of this household of faith. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thirdly, if you come to get some strength for your wrestling, will you just lift your hand? Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Come on, lift that hand, lift that hand, lift that hand. I want you to know that it's in the house today. Just pull it on down, just pull it on down, pull it on down. Just pull it on down, it's your strength. Every time you pull it, it's your strength. That's, that's your power, that's your power. That, that's your power, pull it on down, pull, pull it on down, pull, pull it on, I shake over, pull it down your your power won't just stand all over this house Want to sing it like you mean it? I yes. need the oh, 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 I need thee. Come on, sing it like I you mean it. Thee. Come on, sing it to him. Every hour. I need thee. I need thee. Come on, all over this place. Oh, 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 oh. Praise. I come, I come, I come, I come, I come. Oh, I come to to me. Come on and give God some praise in this place. Come on and give God some praise in this place. Come on, come on. I got my strength back. I got my strength back. I got my strength back. Michaela and her family. Wait a second. Sister Asia, our new family members are here. Let me get your names. Amen. Coming as transfer members. Amen. Come on. Yes. Hallelujah. God bless you. Come on, tell us your name. Welcome to Kayla, right? Malachi. Madeline, Malachi, Amira, and Michaela have come transferring, amen, right, from Greater Bethel? Yo, yo, y'all just coming to join. Come on, St. Luke, let's give God praise for our new family members. Welcome. I want you to know, family. Oh, yeah, come on, come on, Malachi. 
Come on, Malachi. Come on down. Praise the Lord. Family, won't you look at me? Mom, Amira. Come on, family. Come on, look at me. I want you all to know, family, that the best in Christ Jesus, Malachi, Michaela, Amara, and one more time, Madeline. Hey, the best in Christ Jesus is not behind you. It's in front of you. The best is yet to come. Come on and help me celebrate our new family today. Welcome. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Praise God. Pray. Welcome to the family. Y'all in the right. Let me give some hugs too. Amen. Praise God. Malika, how old are you, brother? 14. Amen. God bless you, Natalie. God bless your family. Praise God. Come on, let's give God praise for our family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. We're starting this conference here off already. Amen. What an incredible God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just full. Amen. Praise God. This afternoon, we're going to go higher. Amen. Reverend Brandon will be preaching at 3 o'clock p.m. at Allen AME Church in White Plains. They have food for us. So we're going to leave here uh, whenever Brother Leroy tells us. Amen. So we're going to leave here to go to worship together this afternoon, inviting those who can and will to be with us. Amen. I believe our hearts and minds are satisfied. Um, one o'clock. We're going to leave at one o'clock so you all can go get something to eat. I think it's still in the 11 o'clock hour. I don't know what time it is, but it's 12 o'clock. All right. Well, you got one hour. I'm sorry. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise Father, Son. Come on, grab somebody by the hand. Help us praise him. Come on, help us today, pray. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule and abide with you, with you, with you, and even unto you from henceforth, from now, until forevermore. And the people of God together sing with one loud, uplifting voice. Second family, please stay right where you are. Let's give our chairperson, Sister Shaquan, make your announcements. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I completely forgot. Make your, make your now. This is our I Love St. Luke Day Committee lead. Come on, just turn that microphone on. The button right there. Before we go out, it's a button right here. There we go. All right. Sorry, y'all sit down one second. We're gonna jam out of here. I can't let them. They work so hard. Amen. That they, we want to make sure we hear what they have to say with us. Amen. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, church. I was actually okay without saying remarks, but um, Sister Morgan, I don't even know you, but you blessed my entire spirit this morning. Thank you. <sighs> this week wasn't easy, and I found myself having to encourage myself every day. I didn't even want to be here this morning. But God has the final say. To Chelsea in the Sanctuary Choir, I know this wasn't your schedule Sunday to sing, but I thank you for your yes. Um, to my St. Luke, I love St. Luke Day Committee, thank you. Um, to my co-chair, Kendra, in her absence, she had a family wedding on yesterday. Um, thank you for your yes. 
even in this wilderness season in your life where you think God has forgotten you, I thank you for your yes. And because of your yes, I just believe God to do something marvelous in your life. Thank you, sis. To my fly girls, I call them Janelle and Tierra. Thank you guys for just loving me and always showing up and just saying, Shaquan, what is it that you need me to do? I appreciate you. To my sister, Tika. <laughs> uh, this year, like our relationship has transformed in so many ways. As I watched and helped you in ministry, you have returned that favor. Many nights as you managed a dance ministry and me and your mom, because we were worried about your safety, we called you and made sure you didn't fall asleep at the road. I just thank you for praying for me. Even with me being younger, you trusted my leadership. You looked up to me and always encouraged me. And so I just want to say thank you, sis. I love you. To Brother Bud, <laughs> you don't even know you've been a godsend. You talked to that little girl who did have a father. You always called me and said, Sister Vanderhorst, never referring to me as Shaquan, respecting my leadership and my position. You always said, what could I do? And I just appreciate you, and as you call her, AKA your wife, the boss, because anything that she told you to do for the committee, you said yes, and you showed up. And I appreciate you. I always appreciate older folks who can text, and he can text. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to help my mom text, and she don't get it, always get it, so I love that I could just text you and you can respond. Uh, to Marcus, uh, to Brother Jeremy, who joined the committee later on. I know you had a death, but thank you also for your yes and willing to serve with us. We appreciate you and we look forward to working with you. Um, to our advisor who's been with us from the Gwen Nikwe, thank you for your love and support. Even when we don't always agree, you still give us your helping hand and you pray with us and we thank you. And to our newly appointed um, advisor, Sister Deborah, we welcome you to the team and look forward to working with you. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do differently in this I Love St. Luke Day committee, um, being a child growing up in this church, you know, you see the good and the bad. And one of the things that I admired about ministry is that sometimes accountability and transparency help supports the efforts of the church. And everything that we do, um, it's really just not about asking you for your money, but that you really do support the ministry of the church at the connectional level and conference level. So one of the things I was intentional about, um, being that we know that we have an assessment due this month, was helping the church meet their goals so that they, we can support either with fully being able to pay or have something for the church to contribute to their assessment for this month. I know March and April, as Pastor said, has only been 14 days, but it has really truly felt like 40 days. And we had three fundraisers in the span of a two week time period. Of course, we didn't set out to have those things that close together, but with just a lot going on, things happened that way. And even though it happened that way, we appreciate you supporting us from the Good Friday fish fry to the bake sale to the painting event. And so because of your generosity and support, the team overall was able to raise $3,370. We had some expenses. We also want to acknowledge and thank the Sunday that we did the seed offering. We was also able to collect $375 from the church to offset some of our expenses. So although we had a total operating expenses from all three events of $1,104, the total overall expense that was offset by the seed money totaled $839, and we was able to turn into the church a final total of $2,530. So thank you for your support. Of course, our first I Love St. Luke Day is over, but the work does not stop here. And so we want to prepare you and get you in gear for our block party um, that's coming July. Pastor, it's going to be a homecoming, so we want you to call all, your home, all the old members from St. Luke. Tell them they have a trip to New York that they need to start planning. And we just want to have a fun time for the weekend. Um, with vendors, new things, we're going to do something different. We're going to try to have food trucks this year so it could take the release off of us preparing food and fully enjoy this year. So if you're interested in being a vendor or you have a recommendation of a food truck that would like to participate in the event this year, see any member of the I Love St. Luke Day Committee. We thank you for loving your church, and I love you back. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
And we thank God for the pastor who thing. preached today. Our, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> our youth downstairs have some leftover snacks from the paint event. So everything is a dollar or two dollars. Go down and support them because we're training them how to do fundraising as well. Amen. Come on. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the fields. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty, but see what the devil is the 